Yeah, yeah. What's up, everyone? We are back with the finale of Transformers Volume 2, and this issue is a good one. So this picks up after the events of issue 11, where the Autobots were left stranded and Magnus left, but we see Carly monitoring the situation back on the Ark and sees just how shrewd the Autobots are with Shockwave and the Decepticons. And as the Autobots are scrambling and doing their best to hold back the fire, we see Wheeljack ask Optimus what happened to Magnus. And as they are all confused on to why Magnus left and ditched them, we see Carly charge her van up and go through the portal and just charges in and hits Soundwave, letting go of Cliffjumper and dropping Shockwave. And we have this wholesome moment where we see Carly rescue Cliffjumper and we see Carly apologize for not being there for him. But this wholesome moment just gets destroyed by freaking Devastator. And dude, dude, okay. I gotta calm myself down here because <laughs> this issue is nuts. But we see Cliff and Carly go flying from Devastator. But Optimus rallies up the Autobots and says, Autobots, while well, they are distracted, let's go and get our fallen brother. And we just see Optimus point and yell and say, charge. It's freaking amazing, dude. Oh my God, it's so good. But we see Cliff get Carly out of the you know van because it's all messed up and he tosses her aside and cliff gets pinned by devastator's foot which then we see devastator kick cliff jumper and the rubble of the van into the portal and this part here is really funny so we see cliff jumper and the rubble of the van go into the portal and on the other side of the portal we see the combaticons who are all like combaticons let's go and get into this fight and boom they just get cut checked by the rubble and cliff <laughs> it, it's hilarious man they literally get like gut checked by cliff and the rubble <laughs> but we ship back into the battle on earth which we see devastator laughing but optimus jumps behind devastator lets the fusion cannon rip on him and jumps down and tells alita now which then we see the couple combo go into effect as alita shoots out a grapple hook wrapping around devastator's legs making him fall on the harvester and mm, yes sir what, what a dope combo from these two but we see the Harvester get destroyed and Shockwave is in panic. But we see Wheeljack say that Cybertron is getting pushed back, but the beam from the Nemesis is still active. Meaning Cybertron is basically moving back into its galaxy, but it's still harvesting Energon. And we see Shockwave running into the portal saying he will bring reinforcements and that everyone will pay for what they have done. And dudes, buckle up because we ain't done yet. <laughs> so we see Optimus charging in after Shockwave, telling Wheeljack and Carly that it was him who left Jazz and Cliffjumper behind and that he will not leave them again. And we see Vortex and Swindle and Shockwave talking. And now Shockwave says, do away with this pest and let's get back. We see Optimus come in, taking Vortex as his first victim, smashing him into the ground, shooting Swindle and knocking over Blastoff. The three of them get knocked and they run away like the cowards they are. Which then we see the long awaited, at least for me, since, since we saw it earlier in this volume, the final rematch between Optimus Prime and Shockwave. Which then we see Optimus taunt Shockwave saying, come on then Shockwave. And we see Shockwave threaten Optimus saying, if he takes another step, he will shoot Cliffjumper. But let me tell you, man, it doesn't matter what you say because Optimus shoots off Shockwave's arm, telling him, is this all you do, Shockwave? Mentioning Ratchet, Magnus, life. And as Shockwave is standing there missing his arm, Optimus continues to talk and says, all you do is take away what is good. And he gets on top of Shockwave and starts wailing on him over and over and over. But what's interesting here is we see Optimus have another vision of Spike, but this time a more twisted version of it, which looks to me some more mechanical wires and like around Optimus's hands. They look all jacked and it's all surrounding around Spike. It looks really nuts dude but we shift back to reality and optimus grabbing shockwave's head and this part looks crazy here son because optimus is at his breaking point his eyes turning purple and is literally using his hands to cave in shockwave's head and the match is over optimus prime destroys shockwave after literally going demon mode it's crazy <laughs> this whole sequence is just crazy and we're not done we're like we, we we're not done and as optimus defeats shockwave we see regret from optimus looking at the fusion cannon arm saying what have i done which then we see alita one walk through the portal telling him it's nice to see him back to his old self during the war and that it's really good to see him as his older self and we see optimus immediately say no that he isn't like that anymore and that something came over him and he doesn't know what that was and now i have a theory on what this was but we'll circle back to that at the end of the video but we see next page that the portal is sending Cybertron 
back to its place in the galaxy and that it's time to go home. But suddenly, someone here makes a drastic decision as the portal explodes and the person who shot it was Alita One, telling Optimus that he is home on Cybertron. And as Optimus and Clitchover are confused as to what's happening, Alita tells Optimus that they needed him on Cybertron and the Resistance needed him and that all the Energon Shockwave has harvested can be used by them. And we see Optimus shocked, telling her no, not like this. And Optimus tries to set off the charges that Alita planted, but Alita tells him that she never planted the charges in the first place and that Earth has so much to give and look at all the Energon they have harvested. And Optimus tells her that the Energon taken by Shockwave is wrong and basically tells her that are you seriously willingly enough to use the Energon Shockwave harvested out of malice and blood to refill Cybertron? Because in my eye, Alita 1 is no better than Shockwave at this point. But we see Alita basically reply with, yes, when it's dying of thirst and that she didn't want to force his hand, but too many have died at this point. And with no response, Optimus does what needs to be done and says, Earth needs me and Earth needs us. Which then we see Alita plead to Optimus to not do what he's about to do, which he's aiming at the Energon Reserves. And Optimus tells Alita that he is sorry. Which then we see Optimus shoot at the Energon Harvester and all of his reserves, which cause a huge explosion, knocking everyone back. Alita responds to Optimus saying, you chose Earth over us. Which then we see parts of Cybertron and the Harvester falling down to Earth and Optimus falling into orbit. Which then he says, if this is the end of my spark, then I thank the Primes that this will be my last sight as he stares into the sun and the Earth's orbit. But do not fear! As a voice says, I know Optimus, this place reveals new beauties every moment. And we see Beachcomber coming to the rescue. Yes! <laughs> it's so good. He saves Optimus with his surfboard. And dude, Beachcomber is literally shooting the freaking curl while saving Optimus. And this is amazing. <laughs> I love it. I told you guys this issue was crazy good. But we see Optimus looking to Cybertron as they both leave. And he says, what have I done? And again says, what have I done? As we see a huge piece of Cybertron falling into the ocean as Cybertron is in even worse shape than it was before. And that's how this issue ends, fellas. I think this was my favorite issue of the series, if you couldn't tell. It was very impactful and it leaves a lot to be desired in a good way as we look forward to Volume 3. And I think Volume 2 is definitely my favorite between the two. But I do miss, like, Daniel Warren Johnson's art style from Volume 1. I think if they use his art style from this volume, like, a lot of stuff would have been more impactful. Not to say that... Corona's art style is uh, bad because it's far from being bad. It's really good. I just kind of like the DWJ style a little bit more. And I believe in Volume 3 we'll have a new artist as well. So it'll be interesting to see what they cook up as well for Volume 3. But I really liked what Daniel Warren Johnson was cooking up for this volume. And specifically what he was cooking up for Optimus Prime and his character. As in the beginning we didn't really see him all that different. But as each issue went on he was forced to do a lot of things he didn't want to do. Like with Jetfire and leaving behind Jazz and Clifton, which I guess if you look back at it, it's not really Optimus' fault. It was more of Alita telling Optimus to go and leave them behind. And speaking of Alita 1, I know some of y'all were kind of down on my neck for siding with Alita 1 a little bit. I was just siding with her a little bit because I could understand how she feels being left abandoned and being the only one on Cybertron to really rally up the rest of the resistance. But she lost me with this issue, man. Forcing Optimus' hand by attempting to harvest the Earth dry, it's just, it's just, she's no better than Shockwave in my opinion. And I, it sucks that this ends this way because I feel like those two are like the unstoppable force. Like when they're a duo, like oh my god, like they took care of Devastator like that bro. It was, it was like it was nothing, which is crazy. And I know some people might, you know, start to side with Alita 1 for some reason. But you gotta understand, with Optimus' eyes... The war is over. Like, you know what I mean? The Autobots lost on Cybertron. But, like, now the war is on Earth. Like, why Why would you try and lose another planet for just a small chance of resurrecting your old planet? It's just, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, Alita's character definitely went off on the rails. But, like, oh, my. It, it was it was really good writing. I, I really liked how uh, Warren Johnson did Alita 1. This whole volume, to me, just seemed like many, many choices Optimus Prime had to make for the greater good. Like killing Shockwave like blowing up the harvester like betraying alita one and i want to talk about this real quick going back to the shockwave fight as we see optimus starting to pry into shockwave's head basically choking him out is he gets the spike vision and again 
these these visions the way warren johnson's doing it is very fast and loose but i think we're gonna finally start understanding what he's going to do here as the last vision looked a lot more twisted and we see his eyes turn purple and he looks at the fusion cannon arm saying you know something came over him what if this is the idea of like megatron's like arm like you know what i mean starting to like corrupt optimus prime i know it's kind of a reach but think about how like how they're doing the matrix right like sparky was able to go into the matrix and now optimus basically has all of like you know sparky's memories so it's not too far-fetched that both of these things are just kind of corrupting optimus and not making him who he is but it was really cool to like literally see optimus prime basically see red i mean his eyes were purple but he was seeing red reached a snapping point and just said i'm done with you shockwave like i am just done it was awesome and the whole thing with like the hands being different and alita saying like it's good to see him back to his old self i don't know what they're gonna do for volume three when it comes to like flashback moments because we do know volume three is gonna be a little bit more flashback moments and starscream stuff so we'll probably take a break on the autobot side of things for volume three but i wonder if like they're gonna try and switch it up with like optimus prime and orion pax because everyone knows you know orion pax is optimus prime he gets the matrix rebuilt by alpha Trion, you know whatever it is maybe but for the most part he's always been like a, a cleric you know a librarian all that i wonder if they're gonna do something different here and like maybe he was just like kind of like a, a warrior a gladiator i believe um oh man i can't remember but i think it was transformers animated uh he had a whole different backstory like he was part of the the army something like that so maybe that's what they're gonna do here like he was actually a soldier i don't know i'd be down for whatever i am really really down with the writing going into volume three and also too another question i have is like where's cliff jumper is cliff jumper dead because like we didn't see beachcomber grab him so either cliff jumper's on cybertron or he's dead because he just got burnt up going to like the orbit i don't know and also too we didn't have like a magnus cameo which is a little bit surprising i thought he'd kind of like come in you know have like a little page of being like oh it's all over my ways but maybe i guess that's for volume three or volume four but yeah that's where this volume ends honestly my favorite i would have to give it like a solid 9.5 out of 10 i really enjoyed the pacing especially the finale compared to the end of volume one but i would love to know your guys' thoughts on this volume on this issue let me know if you guys enjoyed it if not if you guys are looking forward to volume three if you guys could also rate this volume out of 10 let me know down in the comments below leave a like if you're new and subscribe and i'll catch you guys the next one i think volume three comes out next month like i said so we'll be covering some marvel and idw stuff in the meantime so y'all stick around and be good Later.